All right. We're moving along here. My name is David Palmer. I'm the uh, one of the sales execs for our military business, and I'm really, really excited to uh, present and introduce uh, a great partner of ours for many, many years. In fact, uh, we got our start with National Defense University probably 16 years ago. There was our first customer inside of military education, and they're one of the leading professional military education institutions today. And, they, and, and Harry came all the way from Fort McNair, which is about one mile south of here. So it was a long trip for him. He didn't come from Minnesota. But uh, Harry Wingo leads the College of Information Studies at National Defense University. They, they run a program for leadership development for CIOs across the DOD. So they're one of the leading institutions for CIOs. We have a Navy CIO over here, Harry, Miss Carla Hammond. So um, I'm really excited to introduce him. And please, everybody, give a warm welcome for Harry Wingo. Thank you, David. Go Navy, Carla. All right. I left my Navy hat uh, back there by Jim, Marine Corps. I was happy to hear that. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, there you go. Go Navy. <laughs> no, it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, I am at the National Defense University, which is over at Fort McNair. And we, as a university, we have different colleges. You've probably heard of our most famous college is the National War College. It's where the late, great Colin Powell uh, as he was a rising leader, uh, he got his graduate degree. And our college is a bit smaller and younger. We're called the College of Information and Cyberspace. But you can say the Cyber War College for the nation. That's what we do. And Steve, it's great to see that the Naval War College up in Rhode Island. Uh, Steve and I were talking before this. So there's military education, professional military education that happens at different uh, layers. In fact, I got to experience it at the Naval Academy <laughs> as a, you know, plebe, you go in, but four years. So that's the, uh, you know, that's one uh, layer. Uh, Chief, thanks for what you do uh, with, you know, enjoyed your comments. But if you look at our first responders around the nation, uh, there's education that happens at that level as well. My dad is enlisted. My father is uh, Army strong. Uh, we're blessed. He's 92 years old out near Annapolis. And he's with my mom, who's uh, much younger than him, but she was a teacher. She taught for 34 years, so I grew up in a, in a household with, with an educator. And so she's happy now that I can uh, help shape leaders through education. And so what I want to talk about real briefly is share a bit about how we rely on and use Blackboard. And it's very important what we do, but what I like about our role at the nation's Cyber War College is that Blackboard happens over uh, information technology. And so if you think about, I'm just going to put it in the right acronym, the Navy versus C, you know, security, uh, where that role comes in for what we do, uh, we do security. Uh, then if you think about the economy, the economics of using Blackboard, and then finally education, which, which is the core, but how it's changing. And some things that I see are possible with what we already have with Blackboard, but also where I know uh, they're going to go with anthology and what happened this October 25th last year. Uh, with, the, with the union. So new resources are coming on, on board. So again, my name's Harry Wingo at the College of Information and Cyberspace. And on security, we do security. So we started out during Grace Hopper times. So Grace Hopper, Navy Admiral, she worked on something called the Mark I. She was one of the pioneers of creating computers. And so for uh, Admiral Hopper, she was working on a team. I think she was on the team in, in, at Harvard up in Massachusetts. There was another team in Pennsylvania. So coming out of World War II, the story of breaking the Enigma machine. It took a machine to beat a machine. Uh, if you haven't seen the imitation game, it's a nice Hollywood version of what happened uh, with using uh, Alan Turing's, what had been theory, applied. So right now, unfortunately, uh, we're seeing in Europe uh, another war. And so we know that we're not only going to have to defend networks, but we need to defend minds and cultures as well. So Grace Hopper saw a need in the 70s, having helped to literally uh, create computers. She was one of the first people to come up with the idea of being able to talk to a machine with more human language, uh, directly rather, for writing code. But in the 70s, we needed uh, IT to be put into the government in the federal government, and we know that it's important for state, local, all the way through. 
And so we were called the Information Resources Management College, not the most exciting name. And <laughs> we were that for a very long time over at uh, National Defense Universities on Fort McNair, which has been around since the 1780s, I think. And then recently, Congress saw where things were going. So we are in an era of great power competition. So we're going up against the likes of Putin, and we see what he's capable and doing right now. And Xi, nothing against the Chinese people, uh, but you have a leader of an autocratic uh, tyranny uh, right now. And again, at, I, I work for uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So something a bit different about our educational institution for higher education is that we are, I'm a civilian uh, that works for DOD. Uh, we carry clearances, and so we not only teach our students, we engage. Uh, and I testified in front of Congress on issues with supply chain security uh, with Chinese drones. Uh, they have a huge market share of engaged on other fronts, so that's something that we do. And our students come from all over the world. So they're not only military members. Yes, we have a lot of uh, uniformed service members from all branches of the service, uh, but we also have the interagency uh, there. Uh, we have allies. So if you look at the Five I partners, English-speaking nations, but then NATO, but we have partners as well. And we have different models, and Blackboard is right there for everything we do. I've been there five years, and so our, uh, we have about 20-plus people uh, and Chancellor Lewis, uh, she's our chancellor for our college. And our team, we have a range of folks. Uh, one of the speakers was from NASA, had a NASA background. Uh, we have someone, from, you know, people from NASA, from all over the interagency who teach. And for me to come in and see, you know, I'd been away from education for a while, uh, but I had been at Google. Uh, after getting out of the Navy, I did a bunch of things on tech. And to see Blackboard there and go, wow, okay, this is great. Uh, they're using the cloud. We've got the information there. And so that is so important to how we reach these students who are out there doing the business of security. And I love the question about cybersecurity uh, that came up because at our college, of course, uh, we're concerned about those things, but we're also are concerned about capability. The pandemic has forced us to do things differently. So we know uh, doing remote learning uh, has become more important. Uh, the cost savings, we have people who fly in, who come to spend time with us uh, at Fort McNair, so this made it possible for us to continue a lot of our education, uh, especially with those who had traveled far. And then as far as being able to reach uh, other students, we've always had distance learning. So we have uh, different models. For example, we have about 50 students who come and stay with us for 10 months at our college. NDU has others, like the biggest school at NDU focuses on the defense industrial base, and that's the Eisenhower School. We have the National War College, as I mentioned. Uh, they're, they're also a little, they're pretty big. Uh, I think Eisenhower might be about 300 students. Uh, I think over at National War College is just short of that. Those students are with us for 10 months. They come over to our college and take electives uh, because we have the specialists on information, uh, propaganda, uh, detect, uh, how you use networks uh, for defending them, but also for attacking through them, so offensive cyber. We cover the strategic level as well. Uh, that, that's the thing. So we're economic. Uh, you, can, you can save. But the main thing, too, is time. Napoleon said to his generals, you can ask me for anything, cannons, horses. What can't you cannot ask me for time? <laughs> and so when you think about savings and economy, making sure that we're using the resources that we have uh, to be able to really make the most of the time that our, our, uh, those we're educating are with us. So much to look at with what uh, already happens on the platform. There's learning management systems, there's ERP, and uh, Jim was going through all the acronyms. <laughs> but I just want to say, uh, and, and David and uh, Selena, when you asked me to come, I was so excited you know, to talk about this because we use this to educate. And I think an exciting thing about the future of education is to look at how do you use what's already there. That's one thing. But if you consider experiential learning, as a big thing for Chancellor Lewis. I'm part of an effort now called, uh, well, it's been going on for a while, but we're revamping our CIO leadership development program. That's a certificate model uh, where it's, uh, students come in, they stay with us for 14 weeks, and we have students. Uh, it's been a smaller class this time because of the pandemic uncertainty. We're not sure if you consider where we're getting people to join the cohort. So we're a bit smaller uh, than we had been in the past. But we have students who are just short of a dozen, sorry, 
just short of a dozen, computer. <laughs> and uh, five are from State Department. And the National Defense University was born originally from DOD and State Department uh, being there. We always have an ambassador uh, from the State Department that's part of the leadership at NDU. We have folks from Army Medical Command. Uh, we have uh, Army National Guards represented. But in this cohort, we also have someone from South Korea, and we have two officers from Morocco. And so that's, that's just normal. We have people from all over the world. It's a smaller cohort. But as far as experiential learning is going, we are going through a model where we're focusing on memos. And these are memos uh, that put you into the world of the CIO uh, today. For example, you think about DevSecOps. Has anyone here ever read the book, The Phoenix Project? Heard of it? Phoenix Project? I see some nods. <laughs> so Phoenix Project is a story about someone uh, who's dropped into being a VP for IT uh, just after some people were let go. They're trying to, and it's something that really is, uh, it's a company that's coming out of the old world of bricks and mortars and is trying to leverage more what's going on with IT. This is an old story, right? But this captures what happened that somebody mentioned Agile. But if you think of DevSecOps, this is something that the DOD has embraced. And the thing about my background going back, I got out of this, I, went, I was a Navy SEAL officer for almost six years. Locked out of submarines, did counter drug work, uh, used technology. Uh, before that, I've been a lifelong learner. I almost went the direction of being an engineer, so I love tech. I love science and all that stuff. Can't, can't turn it off. Um, I get out of the Navy. I went to law school, and I knew I wanted to do telecom and, and high-tech uh, type of uh, law stuff. Worked at a big firm. Then I went to the Federal Communications. And more. So that was, uh, I saw that. And then going forward, I also uh, got a chance to go over to Google after being at a smart grid company uh, that tried to revamp how we're using the electricity grid to not only have it be a broadcast system, but to actually get ready for self-driving cars. That was my ticket to Google. And the reason I walked you up to where I was at Google is that I saw cloud before people were realizing, oh, this is where cloud computing is going to be uh, a thing. So JRS stacks and migration and Jedi is now morphed into something else for folks who are, you know, the Navy people. But everybody does IT. Uh, but what we teach is not the training side of it, to, which is important. And we started out with more roots that way when Grace Hopper got things started. But we t educate for the uncertain future. Uh, any Star Trek fans at Kobayashi Maru, we put our students in a safe environment into situations that they shouldn't have seen before and that they have to struggle with and that they can be creative and more, most importantly, they can work as a team. And so when I mention memos and we're doing a different approach, of course we have models where we write a term paper at the end. That's just, you know, graduate schools usually do that. But a couple years ago, and I mentioned we work for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. We come up through the J7. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said, I love what NDU is doing. This is the whole university. But I really want you all to polish more, giving me somebody who can write, can write, can write. And when you say write, it's not, not an academic paper. You need something uh, that can be on one page of paper, maybe two. You've got the references to back it up. But I learned about this from my continuing education, not in the classroom, but when I was thrown up to uh, work for uh, the late Senator Ted Stevens from Alaska military person, aviator, uh, one of the flying tigers. But I thought I knew everything, being a general counsel person at the, the Federal Co uh, Communications Commission, working for the general counsel, I was in the weeds. When you're forced to write a one-pager in big font <laughs> that a senator has to take uh, to the floor, that's when you really know whether you can, can say uh, what you need to and whether it's relevant. So we're experimenting with that model. And I picked it up from uh, one of our deans who used to work over at NSA. He's also a lawyer. But he was saying, look, we're going we're gonna to do these uh, experiential learning things. So I love that model. But let's consider what could happen if you take the analytics, uh, the privacy respecting, because you have to be legal. You have to go with regulations. But imagine what you could do. And this was said by the last speakers from Excel. If you have that store of knowledge, and you do something called synthetic data. So in other words, you could anonymize it, but you sit, start to see patterns. 
And imagine if the system itself, and this is where that Google part of me kicks in, you realize what's possible with cloud or artificial intelligence and machine learning is going. And this is part of what's done right now. So if Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, now called Meta, remember that whole Cambridge Analytica no longer exists as a company. But what they were doing with psychometrics and using AI at scale, I pulled my phone. Now, now I really wish I had my hat on because I like that. <laughs> I have three daughters. My wife's a judge. We live in Chevy Chase, D.C. My oldest is getting her, uh, you know, there. I teach them two is one and one is none. And having a tertiary, that's Navy. <laughs> and having four would be spec war. Anyway, I love it. We had a backup. Uh, thank you. So tying those things together and looking at cognitive, the cognitive domain, and weaving that together so you can make insight. That is a weapon. That is a power. We have to understand that this is what we do in warfare. Why wouldn't we do it in education, uh, you know, for good purposes? And we heard in the, in the uh, previous uh, presentation that the expectation is there. You're, our students, they want to learn the same way they do at home. And so look at video gaming. And I, I, I realize that we're in a world where Fortnite or uh, what, what Microsoft's doing with Xbox. They just made a $39 billion purchase, the metaverse. Uh, Zuckerberg got in trouble with Cambridge Analytica because that company was applying AI to social graphs, and it fell right into the hands of what Putin was doing to have active measures and attack our democracy at the most strategic point. And we're still seeing the repercussions. And Brexit, it's happening to all of us. But if you go into what's possible with face, I'm sorry, with, with Facebook knows about surveillance capitalism, do it in an ethical way, a controlled way, to give teachers uh, a better way, instructors, insight into our students, privacy respecting, uh, we can do amazing things. And I was thinking about a theme, you know, so for seeing how we can do this, obviously security, it's a business of what we do at CIC, that's what we teach, but the systems themselves are secure. Our students feel secure. They understand this. They've been exposed to Blackboard. We're comfortable with it. Economy, yes, it saves money, but it saves time. You get the most out of what you're doing uh, with the time that you have. And for education, let's go into the future of where things are um, because we can do more. And I think it's sort of like uh, people, 16 years, David, thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> for NDU, how long our uh, relationship goes back. And sometimes people think of Blackboard. Sorry, I just want to check, check my time here. Um, I think of Blackboard, and it's been around uh, for so long. And there's features that people haven't even uh, scratched the surface on. I know I could use Calendar more. I know that we can use some of the aspects just for our team to organize Yeah. So that, that's all I needed. Uh, so on the Navy side, there's a 5% rule. So when I was an ensign, a new officer, and you, you, everybody runs into that senior chief or master chief, right? And uh, I, was, I was taught about the 5% rule. Raise your hand if anybody knows the 5% rule. Jim, I know you. Okay, I know you know it. 5% rule is in order to operate any piece of gear or equipment, you must be 5% smarter than that piece of gear or equipment. So. <laughs> So that 20-second pause, <laughs> definitely needed it. But the thought was, I think of my grandmother, and she had a well. Anybody here know these wells that used to? Okay, so my parents still live in a place where it's not served by that infrastructure. And if you think about that well and you prime it, and it's got great, good water that's there, well, in a way, uh, the system and the ecosystem that Blackboard represents, you've got one of those, it's, it's more advanced than that. You probably have several of those pumps that are there. And I know we've already seen some upgrades uh, where you're electrifying it. You're making it more uh, tied to analytics. And I think we're still getting used to moving away from that 
you know, some people and asked me five years ago, I just went to that one simple <laughs> pump. I know it's going to work. I'm just putting my classes up here. I'm looking, you know, where things are and just going from there. Uh, but I think what's possible now is if you look at the type of analytics you could apply uh, to experiential learning, memos that are out there, if you look at wargaming, uh, Steve, uh, amazing what uh, Naval War College does, for example, in wargaming. Uh, folks from uh, Doug and Tony, I know XL, you've got something that the Army Cyber Institute puts together, uh, the Jack Voltaic series. So if you haven't seen Jack Voltaic, and Red Hernandez was the plank owner of Army Cyber, uh, I asked him, General, what does Jack Voltaic mean? He says, nothing. <laughs> they just came up with the word Jack, and then think of energy, Voltaic. It's a system of games at the strategic level. Uh, I remember one of the series back, Jack will take 2.0. I think it might have happened in Houston. They moved somewhere else. But what if you can play the same way kids are playing games, a like Call of Duty, or you know they're online and they see things? What if you can take it up to the strategic level? And you can have that engagement. And what if you know the elements from the syllabi, uh, from the programs of Touch Those Students are there? And instead of just putting on paper, and we have this, by the way, we have this at the National Defense University. Anyone who wants to come by, state, local, private sector, definitely federal, the Center for Applied Strategic Learning is our in-house uh, war gaming unit. And CASEL is what they're called. We are doing experiential learning with something called Social Simulator with this CIO uh, leadership development program cohort right now. Uh, they've already started it. They're, they're, you come in board, breaking the teams, and they're using Blackboard. They're on. And they, through that, they can reach whatever they need with the UK team. And that's another thing about Blackboard. You're going to the well, but the well still has the great you know, water that you need, but how you can use it is changing. And so for us, they see the, the, the Twitter feed, uh, what's up on uh, Meta or LinkedIn, and they can react to situations that are happening. They get emails that come in, and they are playing through Blackboard is like the interface, but they're reaching to another company. They become part of the ecosystem, and they're doing a... Remember those old books where it's like, read your own adventure or build your own adventure, turn to page such and such? They're doing that on the IT side. And so this is not fancy. Uh, it can get fancier, but remember, we're educating folks at the strategic level. So what really matters is the story that they're, they're telling and living through themselves. That's an example. Here we go. <laughs> so that was an example of training. <laughs> so for education, <laughs> oh yeah, even a Navy guy. No, so for, uh, so for me, I love what's going to be possible and where we're going to go with cloud, uh, DevSecOps. But the main thing that matters is the men and women. Uh, we are building super sheroes and superheroes uh, that can apply the information lever. So we don't always talk about levers, but definitely where we are. Diplomacy, information, military, and economic. Those are the levers that any nation in the world can pull uh, in times of conflict to influence, but also when it comes to war, uh, and we're seeing it. Diplomacy, we use it differently. Before this conflict in the Ukraine. And so we are the information lever of national power, and Blackboard is right there. It makes sense. It's an information uh, technology system, but it's one that we can grow with. We're excited about growing with. And I, if we had time for questions, I would love to hear some. Uh, I know this is a bit higher level, uh, you know, as far as like just a notion, a walkthrough of one of the people using uh, Blackboard, but we couldn't be more excited about what's, you know, ahead of us, and we are a very enthusiastic partner uh, with Blackboard. would also like to meet each of you if there's anything uh, we could do to engage with you uh, from the National Defense University. So thank you. If anybody wants to know how to use this, I can. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, ask one. Oh, yes, sir. So, Charles Allen, I work for the Boston for Educational Opportunity in New York. Um, simulation and experiential. Oh, thank you. I tend to be loud, so of course, now I get to be louder. Um, 
curious with the amount of simulations that you have to run, uh, I imagine, with your students. You know, how integral is Blackboard in helping you get those simulations off the ground and also collecting the data from those simulations, particularly with all the concerns you have to think about with security and information about that? Well, Charles, that's a great, uh, great question. Uh, I, just the basics, we're using it uh, for any number of things. So just as basic as having it in the syllabi, as basic as the briefings that are there. Um, we have experts that can join us from somewhere else, and we can have those, uh, those you know, uh, discussions and asynchronously. We've been doing asynchronous learning. So if there are uh, videos that we either use Vimeo or some other, we have another uh, DVIDs, I think it is. You know, so we have uh, sessions, the guest speakers come. So there's many uh, ways that we can get the simulation off and running uh, you know, to get started. And again, we know the ecosystem already, so we can tie it together uh, using Blackboard. And then if you consider, for example, one element of Collaborate Ultra, I've learned uh, over the you know, past year or two or three is breakout rooms, you know, how easy that is to do. And so it's, it's right there uh, in the system. But as far as what's in the future, uh, I, I don't know. I think we'll have to ask the team, you know, I, I can imagine, you know, given how fast all of this is going, and, um, you know, that, but I hope that answers your question. And the security side, we're always, uh, the thing is, is zero trust. That is something to understand. Uh, that we had an old model. The old model was trust but verify. Zero trust means never trust, always verify. And uh, I worked at Google for five years. Beyond Corp was uh, something that was one of the uh, original efforts on this front. So I think uh, with the zero trust approach uh, to this, we always have to make sure we're, we're being careful, especially when you're starting to bring this multimedia. And if you take unclassified, that's another thing I would say, we have SCIFs or we have facilities over uh, on NDU, the campus. We can go other places as well. But most of what we do when we have our allies and partners, especially on the partner side, we tend to teach at the unclassified level, but we do have uh, capability to do uh, classified uh, sessions as well. But you have to be careful that you don't have things add up enough to, to where classifications would change. So this is a sort of thing where, uh, and I'm a lawyer, <laughs> but as far as uh, you know, having Blackboard as a partner that understands this and covers it for higher education and other uses for the systems that they have, um, that's something that I think we could do a better job also of connecting and, and working with each other on how to do it. But I, I couldn't be bigger on uh, anybody, I love science fiction. Ender's Game, I don't know if anybody so nods on that. Scott Card, uh, so there's so much more that we could do. And if anyone wants to talk afterwards, set them a geek. What DARPA's doing on next generation, third wave AI, what I, wanna, what I am working on uh, as far as academically and want to write more on it, is how serious gaming with human beings and particularly uh, graduate students, we can inform the development of contextual, of ethical AI faster if we have secure environments uh, where we can, uh, we can do war gaming. Are you running a separate instance for your secure environments, or are you just controlling those engagements for those in the skip or whatever? Well, OK. We took it that, yeah, that took yeah. a turn at the end. It was like right at the end there. <laughs> so yeah, I'd love to talk to you yeah, about that later. Yeah, so thank you. And actually, we have. Uh, um, Rob Richardson, former DSOG chair. So we have a DISA chair. We have chairs from uh, different parts of the interagency who are with us. Uh, that's amazing to have him uh, where we are. And so he could tell you all you want to know about that. But I'll, yeah, later. Yeah. Yes, sir. Howard Mason, I'm down with the JTC, Joint Interoperability Data Link uh, Training Center off of Fort Bragg, Pope Army Airfield. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. How, do you employ the use of enterprise surveys uh, to get more of the uh, qualitative versus the quantitative? Because there's a lot of judgment. We've got X number of uh, students to graduate, but did they learn the, the, the subject matter? You know, how, how is that judged in, with the employment of Blackboard? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. Charles, uh, great question. Um, probably not as much as we could, uh, but I know Ch uh, Chancellor Lewis, uh, she wants what we do to be data driven as we move forward. And of course, like any institution, we've got middle states, we have to show what we're doing on, on that side of things. We work for the government, so to make sure taxpayers' dollars are being used the right way. 
uh, but with the analytics, yes, we have surveys. Uh, we also bolt on TK20. It's just a system that we have to, you know, that we we happen to put into it. Uh, but the question is, is what's happening with that, and can you back out? Are we looking at it over time? Uh, that's something that goes up through uh, the leadership of the university um, and the provost. I know that's I, I know that's an effort, but as far as the details on it, I'd love, love to talk to you offline. And anything that you've seen on it, by the way, uh, any questions? Uh, what I've seen is it's better to employ on the course level rather than the enterprise level. Mm -hmm. So it's good to develop it enterprise wide so every uh, instructor is available can see what to put there. And I love that answer. You're making me think of the book we're teaching, Phoenix Project, which is really a fictional account of what happens with DevSecOps. Would you believe DOD put out something May 2021 uh, on Dev DevSecOps on guidance? There's something called Cloud One, I think it is. Air Force has really leaned forward on this. Uh, Nicholas Jalan, uh, he, he, he kind of quit pretty infamously. Uh, the way that he quit, but genius on what he was doing, building on things like with Dr. Will Roper. And so why am I saying this? Your insight on making sure that you have something that's a, a common ground or, or modular and that it's working all the way through, that is the essence of DevSecOps and the approach. That's something the entire force uh, is embracing. But how's that saying go? And you know it's being a new brag. The future's already here. It's just not evenly distributed. And so how do we apply that for analytics and, and make the difference uh, is it's right in the details. I, I'm learning, uh, you know, how to apply this. I, I, you know, part of me just loves, you know, this. And we, we you know, I know the team, folks who actually are doing that uh, every day. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to get word out about how we can use, you know, AI and robotics and special forces to, you know, change the world. But <laughs> anyway, I, I love the question. Thank you. Chief, yes. Thank you. So to pique my interest for a second, and even at my local level, this particular thing, thank you, is is kind of interesting. So can you speak for a second about this process of exploring possibilities? So you talked about breakout rooms, things like that. Is this a system of 10,000 YouTube videos or a brainstorming session among staff or... How are you getting there? Because that in of itself at, at various levels is hugely useful. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, it's, it's any number of ways. And we have folks who do this for a living as far as designing uh, the type of leadership, strategic level, uh, experiential learning that you, can, uh, that you can use. Love to engage with you uh, because uh, you, you, uh, what, you're, what you're doing as first responders is uh, so important. Let me give you an example of NDU. When the Jake, the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, was getting uh, started, they came over to where we are, and we had sessions. And when the team was small, and it's it's not always wargaming; it can just be getting together and figuring out how to do things. Within Blackboard, if you can't, even if you can't get people together, there's ways to construct, uh, you know, something that you can do and build on and learn. Uh, that's that's one aspect. But again, I mentioned Castle. Uh, that's there are folks who can create games. I learned about what's been going on. I'd never heard of Don Blas and, and, and Kiev and what was going on with the you know the peninsula and how there might be a land bridge. Those concepts. Put things together. So it could be cards. Uh, it could be uh, you know videos that are the right videos. Uh, you know that are that are tied together. Uh, but I think uh, the main thing is to design you know, to do the instructional design that you need. And I would say on wargaming, uh, it's, that was as simple in World War II as having, a, I think, a room about this size that, had, uh, that represented the North Atlantic, and they were walking around and, and trying to understand how to beat the Nazi submarine fleet when they were just starving uh, the UK, starving, starving England. Um, and right now, so how could we uh, figure out how to help first responders uh, I have sitting back there something about the uh, stars, you know, up in Canada and Alberta. Uh, you know, like in 2008, they had a new CIO and they went through something uh, strategic. So we have, uh, you'd be surprised, like even in our curriculum, things that may be able to benefit you, Chief, 
But I think that the, the answer, short answer, is it's about people. It always comes back to that. Um, and so security and economy, education is great. But what, the way we see using Blackboard for strategic education is going back to the always the who. You know, so there's a Charlie Feld. We teach Charlie Feld. Uh, he was one of the original CIOs, and he talked about the four planks. You know, so you have to have a why. You've got what, and then you've got how. But what matters more than anything is is you know who's involved. So that's it's a general answer. Uh, but we have uh, the main thing is let's get together. <laughs> we could we could talk to you about how we do it. I'm sure a lot of folks here. Well, Navy's here. Jeez, I know they're they're doing stuff. <laughs> I'm biased, but. Um, uh, I don't know if that answered your question, per, per, you know, per se. Uh, but just the basics is just making sure that you've you've got the uh, the curriculum. You're reaching out to stakeholders who have uh, a common approach like you, who you can learn from. You could also contribute to, and tying things together. Thanks. All right. Well, I look forward to following up with uh, you know anyone who's uh, interested. But otherwise, thank you so much for your time and and for watching me be trained up here. <laughs> Thank you. Great presentation. And as another father of three daughters, I might be calling you about something else here in the future. <laughs> um, Thank you for your partnership, everything you guys do. We really appreciate you coming to the event today and great presentation. Thank you very much.